guys. Welcome to another episode of Splash and Go. Myself, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Burton. Guys, our old buddy Dustin Long wrote an article about the five storylines he's looking for the most heading into Speed Weeks at Daytona. You can find that article, NBCSports.com slash NASCAR. So I'm going to pose the question to you. Jeff Burton, give me the highlight, the big storyline you're looking at in the Great American Race. For me, is what kind of race are we going to get? The last two races have been wreck fest, tons of cautions. Uh, and why does that matter? That matters because from a driver's standpoint, you know, I want to go to the Daytona 500 with a plan. I want to go there understanding what it is I need to do to win the Daytona 500, right? And in a wreck fest, it makes it that much more difficult to do. I need to lead, I need to lead laps, I need to finish high in stages, I need to do all those things to help me try to win the championship, but I also want to win this Daytona 500. And the impact that the last two races have had on my strategy confuses me. I don't know what I want to do. I know I want to run the front. I know I want to do that. But there's jeopardy in doing it based on the evidence of the last two years. And I just think that makes the, the, the decision for drivers way more difficult. Yeah, so I've always thought that the Daytona 500 was a standalone. I didn't worry about the regular season until we left Daytona. And I think that's the case for the big names, the guys that think they have a legitimate chance of winning the great American race. Um, perhaps some of the other teams, though, points are important. Are you a outside-the-realm playoff driver? Do you think points are your pathway into the playoffs? I really don't know. Um, I really don't know what we're going to see, to be quite honest. We've seen a lot of delays in the 500, some rain delays, some weather delays. The weather looks good um, for Sunday. So what kind of intensity we'll see? We see some new teams. Can a new team perhaps run well? I don't think they can win, but will that change the flow of the race is really the question I have kind of piggybacking on you, Jeff. So, DJ, I'll ask you. You know you've stood in victory lane multiple times. You've hoisted that. Harley J. Earl, so what storyline do you see heading into Daytona as the biggest? Yeah, but there's so many. I, I don't know how Dustin stopped at five. I think he just got tired of, of putting words down for a while and, and stopped there. But the, the one that, to, to me, y'all make great points about, you know, what the race is going to look like. But there's one man that has a chance to do something that no one else has ever done uh, in the history of this sport, and that's win three Daytona 500s. And Denny Hamlin is the man that has dodged all of those wrecks somehow, some way, and found himself in the right position uh, to, to go win this race uh, multiple times. He's won it three times, two times in a row, and going uh, for that third win here. And, and I think Denny is just fun to watch navigate through this. He runs up front uh, the majority of the time, uh, but he, he, when he sees something that's going on that he doesn't like, he's quick to get out of that spot. Uh, but he's so savvy in, in what he's doing. And, and people understand that Denny Hamlin knows what it takes. And so he can get the help that he needs, where other drivers sometimes find that hard to come by. So I think drivers like Denny and, and others that know they're going to have their opportunity. If they don't win Daytona, they're going to have opportunities and are going to win races at other racetracks. So they're not concerned about that. Their whole focus is on winning the Daytona 500. And of course, if Denny's able to do it, not only does he get three in a row, uh, but he moves up the, the ranks again to tie Kale Yarbrough at, at number four. So uh, just incredible opportunity in front. And, and Denny Hamlin is the man that I'm going to be watching all through the 500 miles to see if he's right there once again in the mix when it comes time to win. It's interesting yeah. to bring that up because I do believe Denny's victory last year was overshadowed by the dramatic finish with Ryan Newman as perhaps it should have been. No one kind of knew what we were looking at in the next week. Um, so I don't know if you can win a Daytona 500 off the radar, but maybe Denny did it. So I think we forget that that was two in a row. Uh, so, so, Jeff, I'm going to kind of pose this question to you. He's got Denny Hamlin. you got the type of race we're going to see. The question I have for you guys is, what is the value for the Daytona 500 when it comes to momentum for an organization? Last year, we saw Denny Hamlin win that race and carry that momentum really to a great regular season. It didn't end up in a championship. But Jeff, do you believe enough in momentum that somebody can win Daytona and carry that through the regular season? You know, I, I believe in momentum. I think, I don't, I don't think uh, momentum creates success. I think success creates momentum. Does that make sense? Like I, I, you know, you have to run well, you have to be in the front. That's what creates momentum. Uh, I do think that positive energy and everybody uh, working in the same direction, everybody achieving a goal makes those things happen better, right? When we, DJ, Steve, being in the sport as long as we've been in it, we know there's so many down moments. There's so many times that you and your team have to pick yourselves up. 
And when you have a foundation to build on, hey, we won the Daytona 500, that helps, right? Success helps get you through those tough times because you have that confidence to, to lean on, to remind you and your team that you can do it. I think that is important. Um, so, so running up front is what wins races. You know, what you did last week isn't what wins you races, but that confidence does matter. And back to, back to Denny for just a moment. Your, your point about Denny Hamlin, how smart he is in these races, uh, you're 100% right. And if you go back and watch in the key moments in the last two Daytona 500s, how Denny Hamlin won those races was right here. He yeah. was ahead of the decisions. He made decisions that most people wouldn't make, a little bit unorthodox in some things that he did to win those races. And everybody had to be watching and pay attention. I think he taught people how to do this. I mean, those moves he made, uh, and, he, and he got in situations where he looked like he wasn't gonna win. And he turned the court, he flipped it on him and put and made it so it was his advantage because of how he responded to those. That's a guy that's been studying, been paying attention, been trying to be better. And I think that's what makes Denny Hamlin so dangerous. So DJ, yeah. I'm gonna pose this last one to you. And it's about Denny Hamlin. And the reason I wanna ask you is because you're around in that era where we saw some driver owners, right? We saw uh, Dale Sr. drive for RCR, own DEI. We saw Ricky Rudd drive for himself. Now we have Denny Hamlin, uh, one of the first drivers in many years enter this foray of being a big time superstar driver for coach who you drove for. Now an owner with another big time superstar, Michael Jordan. So the general question is, what should their expectation be? And what are your thoughts about one of the biggest names in the sport owning a team he doesn't drive? You know, it, it's a, I, I appreciate what Denny is doing and, and doing it. You know, right now is his time. You know, his name is out there. Couldn't have been a better time if he, this is what he wanted to do to, to get out there and make this happen uh, with one of the most uh, recognizable uh, names and, and faces in the world, not just in sports, but just in the world uh, in Michael Jordan. So given Bubba this chance, uh, I think expectations, once again, that word, uh, they're high uh, for this race team. But I'm a little concerned uh, when you put yourself in that. You know, to drive a race car and try to win championships, it takes 100% of your focus. Yeah, you've always had these other things going on, whether it was souvenir sales or, or other opportunities that, that having success brings along. Uh, but having a, another race team or having a race team uh, is something that's even bigger. I think we saw the effect already last year as Denny was having a great year battling for a championship and all of this came about, didn't perform as well there. So uh, can he get that focus back? I think it's a big undertaking. I think Denny can handle it, uh, but there's always gonna be uh, those people that are sitting there and we will be questioning it too, if he's not having that type of season, is this the, the reason that it is there? But I can assure you that he's gonna be uh, focused on the Daytona 500, understanding what's in front of him there. But, but it is a big undertaking for a driver still in the sport, uh, maybe at the prime of the, their career, uh, taking this on. Well, there you have it, guys. There's some storylines, not just for the Daytona 500, but perhaps some storylines we're going to follow all year long. And if you want to continue to get our thoughts on the storylines of NASCAR, we're going to be posting Splash and Goes. You can follow along all season, get myself, DJ, Jeff Burton. You're going to see Kyle Petty, all the NBC talent, give their thoughts on the season. This has been another episode of Splash and Go. Hey, motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.